Very good afternoon to you. How are you? All right. Heat. Specific latent heat of fusion. This will be our focus for this afternoon. Now, you remember, you can learn anything in life. All right? Nothing is difficult. And in physics, you want to improve. Let me give you the key. The key is in output revision. You have to answer questions, write down the answers, practice, rehearse. All right? Do not read reference books. Just and stop there. All right? It would not help you that much. Doing is the part that will help you. So at the end of today's lesson, you will be able to solve numerical problems that involves specific latent heat of fusion. Quickly, let us look at the question and answer the question. Now, this is also part of output revision. We have a solid substance of mass 0.05 kilograms. It is being heated using an immersion heater, 240 volts, 0.1 kilowatts. And this graph actually shows the heating curve of the solid. Our job is to calculate the specific latent heat of fusion of the substance. All right? Now, let's go step by step. There are quite a few important steps. I will guide you one by one. Now, number one, look at the heater. Now, let us assume that this is the heater in the question. All right? So, the heater is labeled 240 volts, 0 0.1 kilowatts. Now, what is the meaning of that? All right, I'll write it down and explain to you. 240 volts, 0 0.1 kilowatts. It simply means that if I plug this into 240 volts of the supply source, a potential difference of 240 volts, it will produce a power of 0 0.1 kilowatt in the heater. All right. So in our calculation for this question, do not even look at this. We just assume that we are supplying a potential difference of 240 volts. So we get this power. All right. That is all that we are interested in. Okay, I will also write it in watts. Change it to watts. The second thing is the mass. All right? Always write down what is given to you in the question. 0 0.05 kilograms. Now, we have to calculate the specific latent heat of fusion. Now, look at the graph. All right? Look at the graph. Let me call this point P, I can call it R, I can call it S, I can call it T, all right? P, R, S, T. Now, there are actually three sections in the graph. The yellow, the green section, all right, the pink section, okay? So, what we are interested in is specific latent heat of fusion of the substance. So, which means that we are interested in the melting process. Which is the melting process? PR is where the solid is being heated. Alright. So, the temperature rose from 30 to 78 degrees Celsius. And from R to S, we are still supplying heat energy to the substance. But the temperature does not change. It is still at 78 degrees Celsius. So, RS actually is where melting takes place, the melting process. And this is solid plus liquid state. And from S to T, it is in liquid form. All right. Clear? Now, now I am interested only from R to S. No temperature change. All right. So the temperature is not in the equation. Now, what about the time? What about the time factor? From one minute to 3.6 minutes. 
So what is the time taken? All right. Now, these are the values that are very important in the calculation. Now, before I do something about the values, remember the time taken for the melting process is 3.6 minus 1 minute. So, it is 2.6 minutes. Remember the value, 2.6 minutes. All right. Now, I will need these values. I'll go to a new page. All right. I'm going to make, do something that make you jealous. All right. Just have a look. All right, look at this. See, I can just drag it about. Okay, I can see you smiling there. All right. So just now I mentioned the time taken for the melting. Time taken for the melting is 2.6 minutes. All right. 2.6 minutes. Write it in full. And change the 2.6 minutes to seconds. All right. Change it to seconds. All right. So far, so good. Okay. Now, what do I want to calculate? Specific latent heat of fusion. So, on the right-hand side of my page, I would like to write down all the formulae that we require. All right. Now, first, look at this. Power equals to energy divided by time. I'll write this down first. All right. Power equals to energy divided by time. I just use the symbols. The next one. Here is one. Here is another. Which one is the one that we are going to use? There is no temperature change. In other words, I'm not going to use this. All right. I'm going to use this. Heat equals to ml. Heat equals to ml. In other words, it is energy, all right? The energy is equals to ml. Now, in this case, I would recommend that you write down another alphabet here. Put down F. The F here refers to fusion. So, the L here is specific latent heat of fusion. All right. Sorry, energy. So, energy equals to MLF. All right. And energy here equals to PT. All right. Let's do our calculations. So, energy equals to PT. Now, what is the power? 100 watts. Multiplied by time. What is our time? 2.6 times 60 seconds. Alright. Now, I would go one more step to help you in your physics. 100 watts is actually 100 joules per second. Alright. So, I multiply it by 2.6 times 60 seconds. So, here you are. You look, I cancel the seconds, I get joules. Alright? So, this is the energy. Now, this energy here is the same energy here that is used to melt that substance. So, I can equate this part here with MLF. Alright? So, now look at the two where I have highlighted so, I'm going to equate both the equations that I have highlighted in orange. So, therefore, now I have M L F equals to 100 times 2.6 times 60 joules. Alright, it is getting clearer. I carry on. What do I want? I want L F. L F is specific latent heat of fusion of the substance. So, I get 100 multiplied by 2.6 times 60. I have joules and I'm dividing it by M. What is M? 0 0.05 kg. Alright, wonderful. 0 0.05 kg. Hey, look at the units. Joule per kilogram. 
All right, it's very important. That is the unit for specific latent heat of fusion of any substance. So once you divide this, you will get LF. This will give us 3, 1, 2, 0, 0, 0 joule per kilogram. I have one final piece of advice for you. After you have worked out and you have got this answer, do not go through an extra you know, step and try to work it out and put it into standard form. Not necessary. And don't even change it to kilojoule per kilogram. Also not necessary. Just leave it as it is. It is a perfect answer. Alright, don't take unnecessary risks. Okay? So with this, I'm sure now you understand the steps involved in this calculation and in the concept of specific latent heat of fusion. So with this, I would like to say thank you very much once again for being with me. And I'm Uncle Pang here. May God bless you.